my tics actually started in secondary school. They did. But um, yeah, they they just we didn't think there were tics. We thought I had hiccups all the time. Yeah. Because that's what my first tick was. It just sounds like a hiccup. Um, but I was having them hundreds of times a day. And so I tried things like eating slower and stuff like that to try and get rid of these hiccups, which obviously didn't go away. Drinking a glass of water hiccup. from the wrong side yeah, of the glass. Yeah, upside down. <laughs> <laughs> um, obviously, none of that worked. So we did actually go to the doctors about these hiccups, but they were like, oh, that's really bizarre. Right. <laughs> Can't do anything. Um, so, yeah, that's when the tick started. And then I did get more in college and it was stuff like... Um, like clapping and blinking and like eyebrow raising. I've had that one for years, just like very minor ones. Mm. Uh, um, and then, yeah, as you mentioned, I also sh- started struggling with selective mutism, which I didn't know existed at the time. And I didn't know why I couldn't speak in college, but um, it was just like a block and I couldn't get any words out. It was almost like the same intense fear that I mentioned in um secondary school I was still very fearful of so people paralyzed with fear almost is that yeah what essentially it? yeah but selective mutism is um I mean selective is kind of misleading because it makes it sound like a choice and it's not but mm. basically it's usually confined to one place or certain people so with children the most common place is school okay. and then like with me it was just college so it was like the second that I got in the taxi to go to college, that was it. I couldn't speak for the rest of the day. And then I'd come home, walk through the door. Hi, mum, how are you? Like it was just a complete switch. And, and now we sort of come into the really scary stuff, don't we, where you, you began jerking uncontrollably at college one day. I think you yeah. woke up in an ambulance at, at, at one point and you've still got no idea and nobody's really got any idea why this is happening. Yeah, so I I turned up to college one day um, and we were all outside waiting for the teachers to kind of let us in and finish their meeting and my shoulders started doing this, going up and down. Um, and I was with a friend at the time and he was like, Evie, what are you doing? Mm. And I wasn't really responding and I was kind of like walking in circles um, and I didn't know this at the time, but that was all the seizure starting. Um, because with seizures there's so many different types and it isn't just lying on the floor thrashing Um, a seizure can look like walking around not responding Um, and so I was getting really really twitchy and then he was like Evie do you want to sit down and so we got sat down on this bean bag and the teachers came out Um, I don't know it's all very blurry I'm sure it is (laughs) I mean this was 2016 yes Um, but they got me on a bean bag and then I know that that's where I went into the full seizure and then the next thing I know I'm in an ambulance. That was the first one? Yeah, first ever seizure, yeah. And there's been a lot since? Yes, yeah, thousands. When you're in (laughs) one, what what are you conscious of? You know that you're you're having a seizure, the more familiar it gets? Yes, yeah, I'm very aware now that I'm in a seizure and I think that actually adds quite a lot of fear to it because it's like I know that I'm doing this and I can't stop it. And my body is sort of doing its own thing, which I don't like. I hate not being in control. It's a really scary thing. Mm. Um, But I I am actually quite aware in my seizures. It's quite common that I can actually still hear people. It's just that I can't respond and it might be muffled or it might not even sound like English to me. Um, But I'm still quite aware in them. Hmm? And are you conscious of time? Are you? Do you know that this this too will pass? Are you you aware that you just have to... Hmm? I don't usually know how long it's been, um, but, but you know it will my, end. Do you when you're in it or not? I know it will end at some point, but sometimes I'm in a really severe one, yeah. and I'm thinking this is one of the ones that's going to go on for hours and hours, and my parents are going to have to call for help. Like some of the seizures that I'm in, I just know that mm. it's just not going to stop on its own, and that's quite st- scary because you, I would just do anything to come out of it at that point. <laughs> that's what interested me. The idea hey. that the the idea that you're conscious of it and yet utterly unable to exercise any control over yeah, it at all. Yeah, it's terrifying because it sometimes be. I'm in it and I'm thinking things I want to say to my mum yeah. like um, like I'm in so much pain or I need to move, something hurts or my head is really banging or like my eyes are stinging because I can't blink mm. and like there's just, there's often quite a lot of things I want to say and I just can't. First time I'm 
worried about asking a really stupid question. No, that's all right. Go ahead. Go for it. <laughs> I probably should have been a few times before. <laughs> no, you're fine. <laughs> First time I'm owning up to it. How, how, how do you know, and we'll talk next about well, what, what Pandas is uh, and, and, and what we know about it, which uh, is far from complete. How do you know where your Tourette's ends and your Pandas begins? Um, because my Tourette's is all the ticking and twitching that I'm doing right now. Yes. And then my Pandas is... All of the things like my seizures, dystonia, paralysis, um, even the depression and anxiety. Yeah. We now know that was all pandas as well. Um, delusions, the paranoia, derealization and depersonalization disorder. Um, yeah. So basically the Tourette's is just is just the ticking okay. and the twitching. And so so the else. most immediately obvious on a normal day is the mm-hmm. Tourette's, mm-hmm. but the absolute bedrock of what's going on is... is yeah. Yeah, pandas. pandas is like a hidden disease, whereas Tourette's is quite visible and people notice it. Mm. So, paediatric auto... I'll get this right. I yeah, wrote it down. Paediatric autoimmune neuropsychiatric disorder. There's there's also PANS. Yeah. Along, they're two different diagnoses. You you have pandas. Yeah. Which is... You only got diagnosed last year. Yeah. <laughs> Shall I have a go at explaining what it is, or do you want to... Take no, you straight, can go for it. Away. I get confused with all the medical terms. Uh, well, you no, can try. I, I bet you do. So you <laughs> s- you have a sort of inflammation of the brain, yeah, which <laughs> manifests in what we would think of as mental health conditions. So because your yeah. brain is swollen, <laughs> your your brain is misbehaving. It is, and it can come from streptococcal. They're quite confident it comes from strep infections. Pandas or, uh, comes from yeah. strep. Yeah, that's what the A and the yeah. S is on the end. So you ass. <laughs> So that that brain response to a physical impetus looks like a mental illness, and that's why you mentioned depression and anxiety. I know yeah. that you had hallucinations during yeah. that 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 period. Yeah. So it's it's really weird and really often misdiagnosed yeah. because it looks like mental illness, but it has a physical absolutely explanation. Yeah, that's why pretty much everyone that has pandas is at some point misdiagnosed with. FND is a big one. Right. Eating disorders, even things like autism because of all the sensory issues that yes. it can cause. Yes. Um, yeah, mental health issues. A lot of people are sent to CAMS and they don't know what to do with you. Yeah, it's not easy. Because you get, get given help. treatments that would be normal for people with normal depression or treatments even for normal people with normal <laughs> hallucinogenic conditions, but that's yeah. not what you've got and they don't know what you've got. And that, yeah. that, there's a scepticism as well, I think. There's, we're a lot further behind America in this country for accepting yeah. it as a real thing and treating it as a, as a real condition. Absolutely. There's still a lot of um, research that needs to go into it and there's still so much that doctors don't know about it and I think just getting the name out there is really yeah. important because you say the word pandas and people think of the animal. <laughs> like it's got such a cute name but it's yeah. horrific. It's unfortunate. <laughs> yeah. it's unfortunate that really, I think. 